Hello, my wonderful, wonderful friends. Welcome back to r slash pro revenge, where you come to get your dose of satisfaction by listening to others get what they deserve. Guys, I hope you're having a great day today. And in this episode, I've got two stories to make your day a little bit better if it's not as great. The first story, OP gets revenge on his manager, who's trying to get a promotion, but is a horrible person. The second story is about OP and his cat, and how he destroys a co-worker's career for mistreating it while he's on vacation. Guys, I do hope you stay for the stories today, and hit that subscribe button for future revenge stories. Let's dive in. Entirely too many years ago, I started to work at a fast food company. Let's call it Southern State Not Baked Poultry. So Southern State Not Baked Poultry wasn't a bad first job since I was 16, and the assistant manager at that location was my best friend's stepdad. So we took what was tedious and menial and tried to make it fun. He was actually a really good manager and genuinely cared about the people who worked for him. We would do silly stuff before the store opened while we were doing prep, He would always have music playing loudly from his office, and as long as everything got done and done well, he really didn't care if we had fun doing it. We'll call him Larry. This story is not about Larry, though. This story is about our store manager, and we'll call him Tim. Tim was the exact opposite of our assistant manager. Everything had to be taken seriously, and fun was outlawed. I genuinely hated working with Tim. Tim was an egocentric, power-hungry, petty little man with delusions of grandeur because he was a manager for Southern State Not Baked Poultry. Tim's approach to managing was to work the employee until they burnt out, and when they did, fire them and hire someone else. Needless to say, morale when Tim worked was in the garbage. Tim hated that Cruz would prefer working with Larry instead of him. He hated that Cruz had fun when Larry was working. He hated that our store's numbers were always better when Larry worked. And mostly, he just hated everything about Larry. But one thing he absolutely hated was a silly little thing Larry did. If it was before the restaurant opened, he would stick his tongue between his teeth and lower lip and shout out a Hi, Steve! to whichever employee had just walked in. It sounded absolutely ridiculous. I would always do the same thing back, which ended up sounding something like, Hi, Larry. A perfect example of what an ass Tim was is this. There was a young woman who, due to a variety of stressors, attempted to take her own life after a particularly grueling shift working with Tim. After she had recovered, she had come back for her last paycheck, and Larry was working. So Larry sat her down out in the lobby, bought her lunch, and brought her last checkout, and sat and talked with her for about an hour. It was after lunch rush, and he had the time, so he made sure she was doing okay now, talked about whatever she wanted to talk about, and by the time she left, she was smiling, but had tears on her cheeks. She had never had someone just sit and listen, and let her talk out everything that was going on. Well, the next day, Tim had come in and hauled Larry into the office. His exact words were, The next time the Suicide Queen comes in, tell her to do it right next time. So, now you have a clear picture of exactly how petty and vindictive Tim was. And here's where the revenge starts. We were scheduled to have a regional and national bigwigs for Southern State Not Baked Poultry come through for an annual inspection. Tim had his eyes set on being one of those bigwigs, at least for the region. And why wouldn't he be? He did everything by the book. That automatically made him a good manager, at least in his eyes. Everything had a checklist, a procedure, a written set of instructions in the book. And if you could not meet the expectations set forth in the book, well, Tim would yell at you and berate you, because that's how a manager manages, you see? We knew what day the bigwigs would be coming in, because Tim made it known that we'd better be on our best behavior, or else. Well... Before the bigwigs got to our store, several of us had agreed that on that day they came through, we would all screw up just enough to get Tim to blow his cool. So the day in question arrived, and the bigwigs were there for their big tour, and we were on our best behavior, aside from a few little things. Whoops, one of the fryers hadn't had the oil replaced last night. And, oh look, the shaker table hadn't been cleaned. 
Oh darn it, we've got way too much coleslaw made up, and we won't get through it before we have to toss it out. And crap, we don't have enough poultry in the cooker to fulfill the lunch rush, and someone forgot to preheat the second cooker. You get the picture. After the second time, I took a minute too long to get a basket of poultry into the cooker, and Tim absolutely lost his business, yelling, cursing, throwing things, and he actually physically pushed me away from the breading station. He did this in the middle of lunch rush, while the regional manager and several bigwigs from National stood there. Tim stood there gulping like a fish. His mouth was moving like he was trying to say something, but no sounds were coming out. The room was absolutely quiet, other than the beeping of a fryer that was done. I looked at Tim, and this was the moment we'd all been gearing up for. I looked down at where he'd pushed me, a set of handprints in flour on my chest, and I cut loose into him. I yelled at him that I quit, took off my apron, and threw it at him. I told him I was tired of his abuse, his poor management, and how he single-handedly drove morale through the floor every time he walked through the doors. I was screaming that he was a crappy excuse for a manager, and that if he did not have Larry and a couple of good shift leads, that he would have driven the location out of business a long time ago. All the color drained from his face, and he bolted to the office cube. The national and regional folks ended up comping everyone's meals that were in the restaurant who witnessed the situation. Interestingly enough, Tim was not fired, but he was demoted to assistant manager, and Larry was promoted to manager. About 10 years later, I was working at my current job as an EMT. We had just dropped a patient off at the hospital that was across the street from the same restaurant, and my partner was hungry, so we drove across the street and pulled in. Now, I hadn't set foot in that restaurant since the day I quit, but lo and behold, who is working the counter but Tim himself? And his name tag still shows assistant manager. The restaurant was empty, since it was between lunch and dinner time, and I just couldn't help myself. I stuck my tongue between my teeth and lower lip, and as loud as I could, I shouted, Hi, Tim! I haven't been back there since, but this was around 12 years ago. I'm willing to bet that he's still the assistant manager there. <laughs> what a great story. I really want to know what happened to Larry. He sounds like such an awesome and fun boss to work for. Hi, Tim. What a silly, silly man. I like to think that I'm a patient man. I'm hard to anger. My coworkers say they haven't really seen me angry in the two years they've known me. I have firm boundaries, and as long as you don't cross any of them, I can let anything go. One of my boundaries is don't mess with my cat. So this story is about two of my coworkers and me, and it happened in winter of 2013. So I worked at a vet hospital as a vet tech, and coworker one is a kennel attendant, and coworker two is the kennel lead. The kennel assistant is the one who comes in to take care of the animals, and the kennel lead is in charge of overseeing everything, boarding and kennel related, and they both crossed that very simple boundary. I went away over Christmas, since I lived in another state from my family, and while I was out, I left my cat to board at work. One of the perks of the job is free boarding. I trusted my coworkers would take care of him, even if it was the top two busiest weekends of the year. So I set up his cage the night before I leave. He's a shy boy, so I set up a tent with very distinct blankets. One is bright green, and the other has rocket ships. I kiss him by, and I'm on my way, and come back six days after leaving. It's late when I get back, so the hospital's already closed, and everyone's gone home. We all have a key, so I swing by because I miss my cat, and want to take him home. What I'm greeted by when I got to him, was those same blankets. The white rocket ships is now slightly tan and yellow, damp with urine. There were feces and smears on the wall, and a very stressed cat that smelled like pee. We're talking six days worth of filth. All they did was put in more food and change the litter box as far as I could tell. I saw Rad. K.A. the attendant was scheduled to take care of the animals that holiday. K.L. the lead had been there three different days when I was gone, including the last two. Figuring out how to destroy these people became the only thing I thought about. I'm scheduled to work the day after I get back, and K.A. is there. I don't look at her all day. It's the only way I could control my emotions. 
My blood is still boiling, and the sight of her makes me tremble. Now, some important backstory here is that the kennel assistant is kind of terrible at her job. We were kind of friends, since she was the only one who wasn't mean to me when I first started. Whenever I'd find something she messed up, I'd gripe to myself, but I'd fix it. She did some write upable things on a regular basis, and I never did anything because the kennel lead was already aware and was working on her, so I figured, eh, none of my business. I decided against violence, and figured I'd let my manager handle it. At first, I just told him about the condition of my cat and kept the rest to myself. He agreed it was unacceptable and said he could talk to her. She denied everything. She said she changed the cat's bedding every night and basically said I lied to my manager, to my manager's face, without batting an eye. I gave her a chance to own up to it because that would have come with punishment enough. My manager told me what she said. I told him she's lying. He believes me, and I not so subtly point out that if she pulls this on an employee pet, what has she been doing with a lot of random boarders? Manager thought it was a good point, and asked me to keep an eye out for mistakes and let him know what I find. The next day, I was in the kennel alone with her, and began to document every single little thing she did incorrectly. Remember me saying how crap she was at her job? She left me a treasure trove of things to dig up. There was material here to get her enough write-ups to lose her job. I also know that she was stealing clients from the clinic by offering to pet sit for cheaper instead of offering boarding, which is explicitly against our contract and fireable. And I knew all of this. I gather it all together and bring it to my manager, who's horrified and says he's setting up a meeting with me, the kennel assistant, and the kennel lead to discuss it all. He encourages me to hold my temper and to not call them out on their lies at the meeting. The day of the meeting rolls around, and the kennel assistant and the kennel lead are blissfully unaware when the manager calls us into the office together. We all sit down, and the manager begins to explain what the meeting's about. We prearranged to give the kennel assistant one more chance to own up to my face and leave out the rest at first. He had asked me how far I wanted to take it, and I told him I had a lot of dirt, and she denied it all. She swore up and down, said she had taken care of my poor cat properly. I graciously gave her the benefit of the doubt, saying, okay, I believe you did clean like you said, but then how did you miss this dried up piece of crap? She said my cat must have been dehydrated, and I say, oh, well, you documented that he'd been drinking well all week. Why would he be dehydrated? She says it might have been just from the last day. She just wouldn't admit it. So I gave my manager the look, and he tells her, Okay, so you took care of the cat. What about all of this? And he pulls out my stack of evidence that I'd collected. Kennel assistant's face paled. KL had been silent up to this point, and starts trying to apologize on KA's behalf, saying it was a busy week and things slipped through the cracks. I called their BS saying that I had been able to handle as many animals as she had to a higher degree of cleanliness than the two of them could accomplish, so busy was not a valid excuse. We went over every single sin that the kennel assistant and the kennel lead had committed for the past three days, individually and in depth with discussion about each one before moving on. As we worked through the stack, the manager wrote up KA for every single offense that warranted it. By the end of it, she had six write-ups. It was three to get fired. She was sobbing, saying she couldn't afford her kid's daycare if she didn't have that job. My manager very pointedly told her that he had never seen someone with such terrible job performance in 30 years, and if she were worried about her kids, that she would have done her job better. KL was written up and removed from his lead position, and KA was given the option to quit before she was fired. But this is not the end. Remember how she'd been stealing clients from the clinic? She had built up quite a large client base and told me some weeks before that she was about to quit her job and pet sit full time. At the clinic, we still saw some of the clients that she had skimmed all the time and plenty of them asked what happened to KA. Manager told everyone that we should tell the truth since we had a pet sitter we referred to and KA was not it. For the next few months, we saw so many faces twisted into expressions of disgust, contempt, betrayal, and worry when we told them why KA was no longer there, literally dozens of people. 
Anyone who's tried to pet sit or do yard work for a living knows how hard it is to build a client base. The kennel assistant had a decent one, which we absolutely destroyed. After a while, she texted me saying that I was a piece of crap who was destroying her and her kid's life, and she couldn't afford daycare anymore. She went from 2-3 to three pet sitting gigs a week, to maybe about 1 a month. Don't mess with my cat. So judging from the comments in this post, there's a lot of hate towards OP. There's a lot of people saying that he's the bad guy in this situation, how he knew about K.A.'s mistreatment of the animals, and he didn't do a damn thing about it, until his own pet was mistreated. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. If you guys missed the last episode of r slash pro revenge, OP gets revenge on an entitled neighbor who kept letting her dog crap on OP's porch. <laughs> it's a pretty funny story, so check it out if you haven't seen it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.